looking at questions when they when they're signing in, but yet they're they're staring at their computer like this. So you think that they can see you and hear you, but it takes a little bit to get it set up. Here we go, guys. Thanks for being here today. Let's just do mute all in case I'm missing anybody in the gallery view. Cool. How's it sound now? Can you hear my voice? My name's Jeff Holland from Drum for Work, and these are our Sonic Solutions. And what you're listening to is a live streaming drum track. I discovered many secrets that we want to share with you, but first I want to take a moment to welcome you and thank you. Live musicians and facilitators and people from all different backgrounds are having to find new ways to share. First, I hope you're doing well. I invite you to get comfortable. If you're just chiming in, please put your Zoom on mute and you can press the space bar if you want to talk. Uh, we'd rather you use chat. What I'm hoping to achieve is to give you uh, some of the secrets that, that we found and try to make life a, a little bit easier for you, how to set the optimum range. I wanted to start with a little jam. So if you have a drum hanging around, if you have any other instrument or just anything that you can find at your disposal, I'll give you a few seconds to grab something to make some noise with because we're going to have a lot of fun today. I call it our found sound treasure hunt. You can run to the kitchen and grab a pot and pan. You can uh, throw some things in a water bottle to make a shaker. Just use your body percussion. Have fun with it. Have fun creating and keep the rhythms going. Let's jam. come across were you able to hear the bass tone and slap just to give you an idea of what we're using in the studio we have the extended range from the Neumann U87 there's a Shure 57 Rode mic Audio Technica uh, Sennheiser some of the mics that we've learned are uh, used for specific instruments I'll come back in a later video and tell tell more about what we've been learning there no. microphone placement is really key too when you're playing a super loud instrument like a djembe I usually don't want to be this close now I use I use this bike this is an AKG C1000 that I'm using directly into my boss RC 300 looper and so when I'm looping all of the sounds that you heard in the background track were based on the djembe and some of the drums that are stacked behind me the minor viva rhythm drums which I'll come back in a another video and talk about those drums. I would close mic for the sound. I'm sending an audio signal out and we're miking from the room. I love the Sennheiser uh, wireless system, but when you use a wireless system, even in the studio, you're going to get signal noise. You're going to get signal hum. I actually spent some time before we were going live readjusting my EQ. So we set things through headphones and your, your mixing board, which I'll get to the interface in a second. We set that for the way that we want to hear. That's just the natural way that we're going to, uh, you know, do a sound check. But we have to take that extra step, and we did a lot of the live streaming just to put out and see if we could uh, uh, tailor the sound. We tried a lot of this on our own, and uh, we came to Primo Productions, which is the studio that I'm in now, uh, to really jumpstart this. There are a few key pieces. 
The great sounding instruments obviously is the, the first place to start. Make sure your, your drum is tuned well and make sure that it's in great playing condition. Make sure that you're using the best technique that you can. Obviously, if you're sharing online, you want to uh, portray the best possible sound that you can, and it starts with you. Yeah. The second is the microphones that I mentioned. The third is your interface, and we've been through the spectrum. Uh, I started off using a two-channel M Audio. I think it's called the Fast Track Pro. I moved from that to an Allen and Heath board. Uh, it's the ZFX10. And the cool thing about it is it had a direct USB out. And that, that's what I still use for my online lessons because I can actually use uh, studio headphones and I can use my talkback uh, microphone, even the wireless mic, and even with that little bit of extra noise, it allows me to keep the, the drums in the mix out. If you try to use a lavalier mic, it's going to pick up not only everything it, around you, uh, it's going to pick up all of your clothes uh, uh, moving, all of the noises in the room, and the frequencies that it really accents are in the vocal range. It is not designed to pick up musical instruments. I, I suggest so. a head-worn mic, and I'll, I'll show you what we've got at home in the later video. The most sought-after interface seems to be the Black Box by Blackmagic. That's the upper end of the spectrum. I know OBS you. is Open Broadcaster Software and it is a platform for you to load your video into and spread it out to live streaming. The free version, I think, gives you one uh, stream at a time. The, the paid version, you can stream up to 30 at a time. Uh, within that, some of the platforms that we're using, uh, Zoom seems to be our favorite. We love the features, and in some of our future videos, you're going to see us using the whiteboard. You're going to see us uh, sharing the video, uh, sharing our screen. We have to, you have to pay for the pro version in order to stream direct to Facebook Live or to YouTube Live. Facebook Live seems to have a w great video. I think we like the video better in Facebook Live than we did for Zoom. Zoom still has a choppiness to it. So when you see this same video in Facebook Live, hopefully it'll be a little smoother. Um, I also checked out uh, what we recorded in YouTube Live last night, and if you saw the the little ad that I put up on Facebook for this call, I took clips from that. So I was able to record to YouTube, download from YouTube onto, I just used iMovie because it was quick and easy. I was able to put a title screen on it and repost that. This morning, I opened up a Facebook Creator Studio it's on your Facebook page, but it gives you a lot more op options. It gives you analytics. And so the analytics can really help us keep track uh, from the beginning. I really feel like this is our base level. We, we've achieved good audio, we've achieved great video, and from here we can only get better. As we learn new secrets, of course, we want to share those with you and uh, help you make your live streams better. That's why we're calling this this chat uh, Sonic Solutions. Uh, Restream is a big one for concerts. So. If you're a gamer, you already know about Twitch. And so most of those uh, live streaming game devices are plugged directly into the Ethernet. And that makes your timing difference. So you can have OBS, you can have uh, all of these platforms that we're talking about. But if you don't have that Ethernet connection as your entry level into the Internet, you're probably not going to get good audio, video, and you're always going to have more of a delay. We wanted to make sure that we had our sound and the audio ready before we move into the next uh, uh, the next level of live streaming. So with everybody muted, I play as I normally would. I would facilitate a, a drum circle or talk and try to speak. I could do it a lot better if I wasn't hearing myself echoing, of course. But if your host is playing a track, if I can hear the looper, it keeps me in time. And so that going in the background allows me to play and teach and share live and then take a break to make it interactive. Hi. <laughs> so, so how about this? I'm, I'm going to take one out. I guess I should keep the one with the microphone in. So look at the bottom left of your screen and click on the microphone and that will unmute you. The better mic that you can get, the better you're going to sound. The one that I recommended on a budget is a Shure SM57.
It's very focused, it's very controlled, and street price is around 80 to $90. If this was an SM57, I could literally be that close. Okay, so I'm about six inches from the drum. That's kind of optimum. If you back up a little bit, you'll get a little more room sound, and a lot of the times that, that adds fullness. If you're using softer sounds, obviously you can even get closer. If you were using a frame drum, buffalo drum, uh, you always want to make sure that you're not playing directly into the mic. So the reason that this, this mic is pointed a little bit over the drum is because if I play directly into the microphone, you'll get a pop. See if you can hear the difference. Or sideways to the mic. This is the this is the technique that I use in the studio. So the question was placement to computer. If you can avoid using computer speakers at all costs, uh, there's a lot of little plug-in USB mics that you can get, uh, or even for your phone. The Apogee mic seems to be one of the most popular. So you would plug that into the port on the side of your laptop or into the uh, port on your phone. If you have to use a laptop, you want to you wanna be really as far back from it as you can because that way it's going to pick it up in the room. There's kind of a sweet spot with students. The thing that I've, I've started doing is getting students to send me a video. So I'm making my student videos a week in advance. I give them to the students and they practice for the week. During that week, they film themselves on their phone or their, their laptop or iPad, share that back with me through uh, OneDrive or through a uh, whatever platform they're comfortable with, Dropbox, we share. Those are good platforms for them to send their videos back. And then I can actually split my screen and I'll, I'll do a video on this later. There's an app that I use on my phone and I can watch their video and I can critique over the top as if, as if I'm in real time with them. And then I send that video back. Then for any questions, I open it up for FaceTime or, or Zoom call. And that way I can actually see them in motion. That seems to be the process that's working well for lessons. So I, I just grabbed two singing bowls to show a range. So in the studio, I work it around the mic just as you would any other instrument. And then once I let the bowl start to ring, I open it up as if I'm, I'm sharing the sound and, and giving it out. This is a pretty low singing bowl. On the upper end of that, chimes. And bright effects. These are the minor birds, a waterfall and birds. I brought the hand sonic was to test some of those ranges so I can actually go into pitch control tubes so I noticed that a lot of the sounds that the internet loves are in this middle range so to answer your question Eric uh, mic placement for the gongs and uh, having a nice stereo spread in the room 
that's always going to make a cleaner and then things like energy chimes on the higher end of that So does that give you a, a better idea of the, the range of sounds that we can produce? Uh, chimes did sound nice, however, the wide-ranging instruments lose clarity and tone. They, they do. Um, I think we can experiment with mic placement, and I think we can do a lot better. Keep in mind, this is just a very general studio setup. Uh, we spent a few hours yesterday sound checking and it's gonna take us a little while to dial it in. So sound healing and sound immersion is our next step with the Sonic Energy Tour. And uh, we, we'll definitely revisit that. One of the things I had on my list was to talk about the hand pans for a second. This is a, a great time to chime in for those. Really early generation Terratones, uh, uh, Terra Pan by Terratones. And this is a brand new Syrah's uh, meditation series, which is stainless steel. So. You probably have an idea uh, from watching videos what these sound like. We've had a lot of people asking us about hand pan lessons. I definitely want to start releasing some videos for, for hand pan, but we are not using my contact mic at this point. This is only room sound. So I've learned in recording that I can make a warmer sound with my thumbs. When I switch to fingers, you'll hear it brighten. Use a variety of muffling techniques. record this in stereo. I also like to couple that with a direct mic. Started working with the in-sole mic, so I've mounted it right in between the two lowest bass notes. So how did that compare to the room mics? That's what we would like to know. So now I've mounted it onto the bottom and the bottom plate is your resonance shield. I love the magnetic pickups because I can move them around and find the sweet spots. to loop with the aqua drum. This is what it sounds like in the room. Uh, using a simple loop.
that's a little sample of how I blend the different instruments. This is the uh, Boss RC300. Anytime I get ready to play an instrument that's sending out good vibrations, you know, to the whole family of instruments, I have to mute uh, everything that is receiving those vibrations. So, kind of like the Zoom call, you know, you have to unfortunately mute everyone to get the clean sound. When I'm recording a track, I did this right before we started. So my trivia question at the beginning was if anyone could recognize that rhythm. I have three separate channels. A lot of the times I use this as verse, chorus, and a bridge are the change of the song. And that's how I set it up for Cuckoo. What I did was I recorded the Bakumbidi part, the Then in the second track, I recorded the classic cuckoo for Coco Puffs, cuckoo for Coco Puffs. So now those two are on autopilot. If I was teaching a class, that's probably where I would leave it, but I wanted it to sound fuller. And so for track three, I used the family of Viva Rhythm bass drums, the minor Viva Rhythm. Uh, these are actually the soft sound heads. Through my headphones, I can hear the mix, the solo. So hopefully you're hearing how the four tracks, actually multiple layers on the third track, are blending together. practice but that's what I use the looper for it is a practice tool and as I'm setting up the rhythms that I teach with that's how I put our ensemble parts together so I do it with body percussion I can do it with just about anything the other cool thing about the Boss RC 300 is it has phantom power I can use a, a phantom power microphone you know a condenser that requires a little more power to get a cleaner sound and this specific one is the AKG C1000. These have kind of been my go-to road mics. I love these on congas. I love them uh, for djembes, any of the, it's kind of like the step up from that Shure 57. And so this is one of the best workhorse mics for uh, loud drumming, anything that you're gonna need to uh, produce a clean, clear sound. There's a lot more that I want to share with you as far as how to continue to better your sound. Main things today, just as an overview, OBS platform, uh, Black Box, finding the best streaming platform, the best interface that you can. Black Box or the M-Audio, the iRig 2, the Allen and Heath, uh, that was a Z10 FX, and that's what we're using for our home studios into the MacBook Pro. And that's working great. Once we get the ethernet connection, I think we'll have a live streaming capability from there too. I hope you enjoyed today. It was so great seeing everybody. I'm gonna hang out for a little bit. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that can be found as Jeff Holland, Sonic Artist. Uh, it's also Drum for Work. It's who we are and what we do. I'm glad we could share our rhythm with you. Most importantly, be safe, be well, take care of yourself. Share your passion and your love with others and let us know how we can help the world collaborate. It's good to see your faces. You're beautiful. Keep your rhythms going.